Welcome to Daybird Aviaries. Today we're going to be making a habitat for a very special new creature that we have. Now we'll be talking more about him in a separate video, but we're going to start with this tub. This is a Sterilite uh, storage container. We got this at, well we got it at Walmart. Uh, it has the clips on the ends that hold the lid down. And that is to keep the creature inside here. But we need ventilation holes. And we could drill holes in here and that would work perfectly fine. But today we're going to melt holes with a cheap soldering iron. Yeah. This is how I make our little containers that we keep baby birds in. Now we are in the kitchen, away from the rest of the house, away from the birds and the other animals. We have windows open, we have the, the ceiling fan is on, we have a fan blowing out. Ideally you would want to do this outside, but it's raining outside and we need to get this done today. I'm going to use this little ruler. I know it's hard to see because it's weathered, it's been left outside. This is something that I picked up. I don't even know where it tells you spacing to plant vegetables with. But the nice thing about it is that it has a hole every inch. And so we can place that down on here and then use this just to pierce a hole. Yeah, that's so cool. Right through the middle. And that's going to give us an even one inch apart. And, just like that. And also make sure your holes are small enough that the creature can't escape. Absolutely. You want to make sure that your creature cannot escape. And this is working exceptionally well. It stinks. So, I'm not going to bore you with all this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cover this lid with holes. So you can see that I have a whole bunch of holes poked in the top of here. But that's not going to be enough. If ever another tub was stacked on top, then that would seal this off. So we need to go and put a whole bunch of holes around the side. So that's what I'm going to do. Right here. One of the reasons why I prefer doing the soldering iron and melting the holes in it is it leaves the inside very, very smooth. And so the creature that we're going to put in here won't rub himself on it and get hurt and that is very very important so we're going to put about two inches of the eco earth in here this is almost a full block that has expanded and we're just going to dump it in and spread it around a little bit and there's still a few small clumps and that's okay we're not worried too much about that and now we're going to let Catherine decorate this. One end is going to be a warm end and the other end is going to be a cooler end. And so we're going to put a hide at both ends and we're going to put a water bowl at the cool end. Now. So I got all the eco in here and I'm just kind of slightly Packing it down as you can see just lightly put my hand on top and packing it down and when I'm packing it down I'm spreading it out and now time for decorations so, First I'm going to put in the heart. I think I may put the heart like this This I is the Eco Earth brand not Eco Earth Eco Earth is the brand of the bedding this is the Exoterra brand of hide that we're using. We like these because they're roomy on the inside but smooth and can't possibly harm the animal in any way. And Captain likes to take her time and really decorate, but what she doesn't realize is that this creature burrows and he's going to redecorate on his own. I know, but just so it's kind of like someone moving into a new house. Okay, now tell everybody why we have two hides. Because one hide is for the hot end and one side is for the cold end. 
So we're going to have to put a heating pad underneath the hot end. And so the water goes on the cool end. Which is going to be this end. That end. Now the animal that we're going to put in here can curl up inside that water bowl. And, and so we only going to want to fill it up halfway so that when he crawl, curls up inside, he won't overflow it. And she's just putting a piece of rock in, a piece of slate rock in that he can crawl around on. Yeah, if it gets, too, if it gets too cold on. Now we're gonna do a semi-sort of bioactive enclosure for this guy. I say semi-sort of because we're not gonna put any live plants in, but we are going to put a small cleanup crew to populate this with. Captain's gonna start by putting in some springtails. The springtails are tiny, tiny little insects, little itty bitty oh, white Daddy, bugs. And, well, you just squash them all. Okay. <laughs> there are thousands of them in that little culture that she just put in. Springtails are tiny little insects that eat things like mold and mildew and yucky things like that. And we're going to add some other cleanup crew yep. right now. And Catherine is placing some, just some botanicals, pieces of bark and leaves and stuff. This is stuff that we have used for culturing some isopods, just some wild caught isopods. They were actually collected yeah. out of our goat barn. Now for those that don't know, an isopod is a roly-poly. The roly-polies are going to clean up any kind of yucky stuff that this creature is going to leave behind. Now Captain's going to spend about two hours decorating this with every single little leaf and piece of everything that she she has in this container with the isopods, but for me, I just dump it. So I'm going to pause and we'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so I just got done and I just want to show you. Look at how amazing that looks. All the way to down here at the bottom, all the way to up there. So, 